30. Looks like they might go back towards us. Yeah, both teams kind of ignored it last time around, but instead of actually even grabbing when the set taken away, Nenny did have an amazing performance on that. Like I said, the team fights were exactly what he needed to do. That flank as well, the TP flank where he's just like, all right, bye, Betty. You are not a part of this fight. You are non-factor, and I can just kill you outright. Yeah, and now we get the, the Volley Bear coming through from Nene. Still things like the Dan open available for Shun. Thresh, a big one. Um, you can still see like the Nocturne as well, if that's what IG would like to go for. Although with Nene having taken up his Volley Bear, feels like we're not going to be looking towards that Nocturne, at least on IG's side. I would be a bit surprised if maybe, you know, they want to put it on the rookie. That maybe that's what they could do. But I feel like you're right. I don't think that that's going to be a high priority for them, especially not when you have to contend against something like the set that can be flexed into the mid lane and you have to deal with that since this Gwen takeaway, making sure that it's probably going to be, I mean, even though the thing is, whenever I see Gwen, it's like one of those champions like, yeah, technically can be flexed into the jungle, but her top lane is just such a commanding thing that I always get a little bit annoyed when I see a flex there. Yeah, and honestly, I think when you've got the set that can work so well in the mid lane as well, just Gwen top, set, mid makes a hell of a lot of sense here. Right. You've got that poke damage as well coming through from Betty on the Sparrows, but it is going to be answered with that counter in the Callista. Callista can destroy Varus in this lane as well. When he gets that opportunity, and to go for it super aggressively, trade very, very well as well. So it's more that level six where Varus kind of has that uh, ultimate to try and keep Callista in check, which makes things a little bit easier. But now IG banning away those supports that can, you know, stop these heavy engages in the bottom lane tam kench already taken off the board opportunity to go towards something like the karma ban here as well or that fresh if they really want to karma more so so you don't end up in the lane with a hell of a lot of poke and uh, something that can slow the Callista and just make her damage fall off the and with the tom kench ban from the side of ig i'm expecting either the ban well I, it's got to be the ban towards thresh even if nautilus is left open that thresh pick is just so critical for the side of lucas to make sure they're getting such a dominating lane especially now that we see nautilus banned by the side of ig rogue warriors please read this I mean, for Rogue Warriors, yeah, you can uh, ban away the Thresh, maybe the Leona as well, just to try and give this virus a little bit of safety. But either way, you know you're going to get an aggressive support coming in with IG off the next parry. And then they can leave that counter pick for Rookie in the mid lane. Rogue Warriors decide to ban the LeBlanc and instead make sure they're able to get something for themselves. But looks like it will be that Thresh going towards Lucas. And he's going to be pretty happy with that potent combo that they've managed to pick up. Exactly. That's why I was saying the Thresh ban would have made a lot of sense, even though we were talking about before for how powerful LeBlanc has become in this meta. We've seen so many more of these mid laners falling on to this uh, champion, picking her up because how much she can take over her rotating ability to be able to move around the map, especially if you give it over to Rookie and Chun, where they always like to tag team everywhere and make sure they're the ones getting ahead. It is going to be a, an easy counter now for the side of IG, holding off on that pick, making it so that Rookie is going to have the time of his life in mid. I'm surprised to see the blind Silas though. Same here. On now, it means that one, you've got Gwen, who's probably going to be going towards that jungle for Xiao Hao. But also, <sighs> I don't particularly like Silas blind. I think there's a lot of counters that can go into him that work pretty well. Hell, even something like the Zoe that Rookie's been incredibly strong on could work. Although when you look towards IG's composition, it very much is a, hey, let's go in and dive in on top of all these people. So may not want to go towards that. So curious to see what he does decide to go with here. But on Rogue Warrior's side, a very strong team fighting composition. Nice oh. aspects of scaling coming through with the, the Gwen there as well. And a lot of lockup as well being offered by the likes of Set, Alistair, Farris. So certainly a team composition that wants to get in, get close and personal, and has Xiao Hao for that late game insurance. On IG side with Rookie taking that rise in the mid lane, we again get another, well, very strong team fight off of that level, or those first time of spikes, but certainly something that can play around side lanes a little bit more, became less impactful, and then she couldn't actually find these early kills to snowball towards that later point and it feels like Gwen kind of slots into the same issue where she doesn't even have those like CC uh, plays to try and set up for her team so she's even more reliant on her laner's uh, ability to provide that crowd control for her and if she can get the kills great otherwise you're looking you know three items realistically until this Gwen is actually relevant. IG, they're setting up for a potential late invade yet again, 
but Rogue Warriors are wise to this this time around. Forge was hanging out in the wings. They're going to be able to spot it out, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem like they're in the position to fully fight back. They brought down Zed the Zed, looking for the flank. It's only four members of IG here, but look at the damage on Shao Hao already. They're trying to be able to get the engage on a wink, and they do find him for first blood. Five members of Rogue Warriors to make sure they can secure that play on the bottom side. So kill does go the way of Rogue Warriors. Now you get the TP from ZDZ and an easier clear coming through from Xiao Hao. Shun as well nice. forced back onto his own side. He had to start with his Q, so he's not even going to be able to, you know, tank a huge amount of this. We may see an early back coming through from Shun just because of the damage that can come through from his camps. Hey, you know what? For Rogue Warriors, definitely going to take this. You get the kill and the Betty's pockets. You had already talked about this. Varus Kalissa lane being kind of a troubling one for this immobile Varus, now having a little bit of an edge over Wink, especially because it was Wink who fell immediately. I want to see now Rogue Warriors utilize this lead, especially to make sure they can shut down any potential from this bottom half of the map. Yeah. And I think a big one here is like just the fact that Shun's been set behind as well means that that early play that we we're kind of talking about towards that bottom side becomes a lot more difficult, slower, clear, less opportunity to go for these scuttles as well. And as you can see, ZDZ, he's controlling oh his top side. You have that bounce back in the mid lane. There is an opportunity potentially for Xiao Hao off a of bot lane pressure to play towards both scuttles or get top scuttle and have Betty and Cho Cho solo out that bottom scuttle. This is Rogue Warriors Oyster World. They have everything that they could possibly want to be able to accomplish here. We just need to see them be proactive. We need to see them see them utilize this because right now Forge oh, is getting Forge. massively chunked out by Rookie. So Xiao Hao, who's hanging out on the wings, might not be able to actually help out before Forge dies. He finally does show up and you can see the damage, the flash wave from Rookie. He's even going aggressively into two members of Rogue Warriors so they can get the Rune Prison on top of Xiao Hao, looking to be able to take him down. They will be able to trade it back and barely the Triumph was able to keep Shun alive. Hero minion as well keeps Forge alive in that scenario. Triumph playing dividends for Shun, who was going to go down towards that red buff, but not going to be the case. And now Shun off of Rookie, having so much control in this mid lane, will get that Skull Crab for himself on the bottom side and going to be in a much happier spot. The fact that Shun lives there too is a bit devastating and heartbreaking for Rogue Warriors, because I think that if that kill goes over to Forge, being able to turn that around, make it a one for one, that keeps this momentum for Xiao Hao. Even if he does die in the fight, you can get the kill on the side, so you can get another assist onto this Gwen to make sure that they can continue this powerful skirmishing potential into these early fights. Also, the fact that, you know, Xiao Hao didn't get to go for this full clear, right? He's only now clearing his blue buff. He's a little bit slow on that one. His camps are respawning in the bottom side, but he's not actually getting towards these level two camps. So he's falling behind to Shun, who's going for this invade to see if he can get rid of some of these level two camps that have now spawned in Rogue Warriors jungle. Even though it is spotted out and can't even be answered, actually. If you look, there's nothing really to gain for Xiao Hao. So Shun, Rookie, already they're able to tag team, work as this duo that we had highlighted before to scare off the bot lane of Rogue Warriors. Even though Forge was hanging out looking for a potential flank himself, they're just forcing away Betty and Cho uh, Cho to make sure they're not gonna be able to get anything really in the spot lane with this huge minion wave already built up. And why'd you go back, guys? Why'd you go back? Nice hook coming in from Lucas. They got the members even with a knock up on top of Rookie. He's gonna be able to take the shield and get away, barely surviving. Wait a minute, the Ignite. Oh, he lives! And now with the turret, the snip snip. One is falling for the side of IG. It is an even trade across the board. It's actually a major win for Rogue Warriors though, because mid lane, you're getting Forge pushing in. Betty survives, so still gets the wave and the experience. Whereas when you look at uh, IG, they end up giving that kill back over. You're missing out on this CS now for Rookie in the mid lane. So nice play from Rogue Warriors to actually keep that with that play within touching distance and what could have been a disaster. Now we see the replay here where Chocho -Cho goes low. Lucas needed to tank up that turret for long. Lucas has the flash, whereas both flashes are already expended on towards Rookie and um, Shun because of that mid lane play. If Lucas tanks that turret up that little bit longer, they can finish off Chocho, -Cho, they reset, they can go towards the kill on towards Betty. Mm -hmm. But with that mess up, uh, you end up in that situation where you end up with the mid laner from IG nearly falling. 
Nearly went down, barely does hold on to his life, and then it ends up being an even one for one trade. And like you said, that only favors Rogue Warrior since so many members were committed by IG to force that play in the bot lane. So they now feel like they have to force yet another play, trying consistently to see if they can kill off the bot lane of Rogue Warriors, which they do, and put more gold into Wink's pocket. And this is exactly what we talked about. Rookie having priority mid, hell yeah. Let's get him down towards this bottom side. And he's been doing an amazing job of it thus far. Does mean that you're getting the opportunity for Forge to get a bit of alone time with the minions and that terror, but still the advantages are going the way of IG. So now we can see that thousand gold lead opening up. Shun again getting control of this bottom side. And we talked about the struggles for Xiao Hao on this Gwen, but they're only being amplified when Shun is threatening them so much in his own jungle. Pretty much just saying that I can constantly invade you. I will always look to be able to fight in your face, in your jungle, because we have priority bot lane, because we have priority mid lane. Even top lane, you can see there's a bit of priority for Nenny, making this jungle Gwen have such a difficult time now to be able to do anything, unlike how it was just a few minutes ago. And especially for Rogue Warriors, you, you know, want time in this game to become relevant. You know, Forge, get his ever across. We talked about Xiao how realistically needing three items before he really becomes a menace. And you're not going to get that time here because IG are just picking up the pace over and over again. And you're not getting those responses coming through from Forge, who's been struggling. Well, I mean, it's also Rookie's Rise too, so... You're struggling into this lane, you're trying to scale up into it, but then you have to look and face down this menace in the mid lane, who's constantly shoving you in, getting these mine, you know, microscopic leads, but they're enough to constantly, over and over again, batter down at your defenses and make it so he is also going to be a threat if this game scales long enough. And now Rogue Warriors are trying to see if they can punish Rookie. No, has his flash available though? Oh, missing it up. Gone of Duck. And now the TP comes in from Nanny to be able to look for the dive. They've got that Stormbringer ult if they actually want to fully commit for this. Minion wave will be built up. There's an attempt from Rogue Warriors to make the play on Rookie. They wanted to try and get this play to move over towards Rip Carroll with that man advantage. But unfortunately for them, not able to make that play happen. Forge nearly going down as well it means now IG can turn five members oh. over towards this Rip Terrell. I don't think you can test this Rogue no. Warriors. You already lost out of this eight minute fight in the last game. Look at how low Forge is. Well, they tried to go for the commit and Rookie, he just got the fancy beat. Jojo, he gets blown up and with the engage coming in from ZZZ, trying to see if they can get anything from Forge. Forge is just taking a lot of damage from Wink. The flash is in a bound, trying to be able to escape with the Realm Warp, the chase is down. ZZZ will be able to escape on the other side of the wall, but with the pick in mid lane, with the pick on it to the support, that is an easy eye of the Rift Herald for IG. And three kills for Wink now. This Callista is getting very, very far ahead. And like we highlighted at the start of the day, when Wink is ahead, he looks far stronger. Now he's gonna be in a position where he can actually threaten a lot of people in these team fights especially for people like Forge and ZDZ who want to be able to, you know, slowly work their way through these fights, utilizing the Haymaker shield, utilizing the fact you've got this heals coming through for Silas, won't really have the opportunity. And you can see here, Rookie, brilliant flash away from the engage with Chocho. And from that point forward, like, it's all gone disastrously. Betty can't even get into this fight, and it's just IG ripping their way through Rogue Warriors. It's one of those moments, right? You, you see your opponent make that play. You're just like, you know, Fair play. It's over. We're done. We're not winning this fight. This, there's no way in hell you're winning that fight. I think we're fight. never going to. No. I don't know why they tried. Like, we already said, hey, look, Xiao Hao needs time. Forge needs to get his Everfrost. Like, you need this one to two item spike at minimum from Rogue Warriors to be able to fight. I don't know why they tried to attempt it. And it's very reminiscent to the last game, right? They feel like they need to fight because they're under pressure against IG. But if they actually were to take this slower pace, it will play towards their strengths and towards what the composition is trying to do. If you want to go for these early fights and try and contest these early objectives, don't pick a Gwen jungle. Pick something yeah. that can actually fight at these early stages. Exactly, and if you pick the Gwen jungle, you have to understand the ebb and flow of the rift. Understand that you're just not gonna be able to win that fight, not after you have so much gold that's been picked up by Rookie on these flanks and these uh, rotating ability plays that he's been having towards the bottom side with Wink having two kills to be able to overcome that early death that he had suffered at level one.
I'm also not a big fan of the itemization that we're getting from Xiao Hu. He's gone straight towards this Nasher's Tooth. Nasher's Tooth is great in these like long drawn out fights where you can get multiple auto attacks off, but look at the composition IG have, right? They are very heavy burst damage where Shun, Nani, Rookie getting like one combo off and annihilates someone and then you just carry on for the rest of the fight. This is not somewhere that you're going to be auto attacking a lot and you're not going to be inside lanes to try and utilize that. It's nice job from IG to get away. I like that. I like that play. Shun just having the conviction to stay on the objective, knowing that if they peeled back, that it wasn't going to reset. It was going to be stolen away by Road Warriors, so they commit to it. And when you have Lucas on his Thresh, it, it makes it so much easier for you to play aggressively, unlike how you normally see it in like a Jinx or in a Felios comp, where he's trying to more to be safe for the team. They can play aggressively while still being safe for the team. And you can even see that reflected in the rune choice, right? Takes the aftershock, not this, you know, not this guardian that people want to go Ooh. towards, keep people safe. Now he wants to get in their face. Yeah. He wants to be getting this aftershock proc, actually being a frontline thresh the way thresh is supposed to be played. Yeah. But yeah, I think honestly, I like that we're getting this from Lucas again. I think it's just, it speaks volumes about what IG you're trying to do. It's, we're going in, it's one direction, that is it. And for Rogue Warriors, that's kind of terrifying because they just do not have anything that can really match toe to toe against IG, especially when they're accelerated with a two and a half K gold. They're accelerated, they're also shoving in every single lane. The only one now that's not is bot lane because Wink and Lucas had recalled. So now you can see this rotating that we are talking about from Rookie and how he's always able to team up with Shun so they can pop the eye top lane, more gold than any. This is looking exactly like what we saw at almost the exact same time point last game, isn't it? Yeah, it's looking very reminiscent of it. And I think as well, like for IG, when we look towards their composition, right, we think, hey, look, they're on a very much a mid-game spike where you're looking at Rookie, who'll be able to pick up one to two items, Wink as well when he gets that Ruins Hurricane. So the fact they are accelerating this game is phenomenal for them. And even when you look towards, again, the compositional strengths, like Rookie on something like a Rise, usually would struggle in team fights where oh he's going to be turning a whole bunch of damage into these tanks but zdz is going to be looking for flanks in these scenarios so a lot of this damage is going to be sticking onto people like forge betty even chocho who's not really tanky without that ulti so a lot of the damage that's going to be coming through from ig is going to stick and it's going to hurt and I don't think they're going to be able to survive long enough like they'd want to to be able to scale up. And going back, I kind of want to circle back to the point you made about Chow Hao having this early Nasher's Tooth and how it, I mean, yeah, a lot of people on Gwen tend to build this, especially early on, to be able to get a lot of that extra damage in long, drawn-out fights. But these aren't going to be that long, drawn-out of fights against IG, especially not when you're behind like this. Yeah, and that was the big one for me. It's actually why we we have only seen a handful of times this Nasher's Tooth picked up on Gwen. I think Zoom has built it a little bit, and I'm pretty sure there's a Flandre, I think, built it as well, but there's only been two or three players that built it 90% of the time that we see it. It has actually been just the um, Riftmaker, Zonya's yep. Cosmic Drive build, and I do prefer it. I think, especially for a team fight where you're able to get a lot of damage off with the, the needlework, and um, especially if people are lined up, uh, in a row it makes things a hell of a lot easier and especially when you're a jungler it's not like you're going to be trading super hard in lane so you are going to be more focused towards these team fights where i just think that build is far better especially as uh lyric pointed out yesterday the ability haste you get off the cosmic drive is so nice for in these fights it is incredibly nice but right now wink I don't think anybody's going to be able to save your life. No, it was a cancelled TP. He was able to flash. There it is. There's going to be the damage coming in, and they're going to be able to get the kill for Forge. But now it's going to be reciprocated with their own TP in the middle of everybody. Eddie trying to get the damage on a Chocho, making sure that they can at least peel back. But it's still at 3v4. Not going to be able to even get the Stormbringer. So now Rogue Warriors gifted this advantage. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to think. Of. Rookie's still stuck in the top side. You see, he does manage to cancel the TP from... Um, ZDZ, but he's not able to follow in at all. So now two quick kills going the way of Rogue Warriors and uh, all that we were just talking about. Of, hey, you know, IG looking great, looking wonderful. Uh, we're starting to see classic IG things. Hey, and I will give credit where credit is due for Rogue Warriors being able to punish the misposition of Wink. Wink far overextended. He thought he was a lot safer in that bot lane than <laughs> really you are. Even as a Kalista, even if you do have that mobility to move around. Nobody was nearby you, and you were in such a long lane to be able to get back towards your team. Rogue Warriors did ex 
uh, expend a lot of time though in that bottom side of the map ig get the quicker resets now they actually have position on this rift channel so we'll have to see now if rogue warriors can try and contest them but again it's nice that you got these first time spice coming through but gwen not really a, a champion at this stage she's not gonna be no. able to get off a huge amount of damage especially with her needle work down so ig but they will be able to get this uncontested and can just turn this in towards the mid lane turtles. And that's exactly what I'm expecting them to do as they're already set up. They're even looking to see if they can find a pick onto the members of Rogue Warrior, seeing if they can get onto Betty especially. That's a lot of the damage, especially as you're going towards that lethality build. If you can take out Varus, you can take out any real fight that Rogue Warriors will have. Yeah, and now Rogue Warriors are like, well, Dragon's up, but they have Rift Herald. They threaten mid lane. We can't really contest Dragon right now for fear of losing potentially two of our mid turrets. So IG now kind of got them in a, a between a rock and a hard place. And they got the pick attempted. Look to see if they can get a little bit of damage. Rogue Warriors don't want to relent. They don't want to have to retreat out of this play. They've even looked for the attempted play. They've got a lot of damage, and they actually got the burst onto Shun. Look to see if they can throw it back to the back line. They're going to be pulled back in by Lucas, but as you said, he's still alive. Got the heal just in time for Betty to keep him alive. Try to dive over the wall, but now that Shun's dead, this could allow Rogue Warriors to fight back, but they have to be so careful. They cannot play too aggressively and get themselves caught out. Yeah, ZDZ needs the back, doesn't have that teleport, so it's a 4v4 for the moment. IG missing their jungler though means they can't really start up Dragon. Rookie also gonna go for the reset, it looks like, but again, like, you've got IG going for this aggressive play in mid lane, trying to see if they can push in that wave, but you have Nanian bot side, so Shun gets caught out and ends up giving control back towards Rogue Warriors. Ah, uh, but unfortunately for Rogue Warriors, you talked about how ZDZ needed to back off, uh, Chocho had followed with them. They didn't have the play necessary to make sure they can control the uh, objective. But I do want to give praise again to them finding this pick on Shun. Yeah, nice job there from Betty with the flash forward. Shun, very overextended. And look where Nani is, right? He's got nowhere to go for this fight, no teleport. So this fight very quickly falls apart for IG because you are already a member down and you're 3v5 in that mid lane skirmish. But doesn't matter, still Dragon goes the way of IG, so some kills back in favor of Rogue Warriors, but the objective's still going for Invictus game. I always forget that as Silas, you also steal away the Alden Felicia. <laughs> I was like, wait, how do you throw yeah. in Gwen? I'm like, oh, that's right. I'm like, brain sometimes not clicking on those ones. But I got, you know, it, avoiding my brain being small. We're looking at this game and how this game is playing out right now. And it, it just, I feel like Rogue Warrior, they're on the verge of greatness. They're grasping at these fights. They're finding the proper plays, but unfortunately, they're just getting themselves punished as well. Right here, ZDZ looking like he's going to be punished. He has the showstopper trying to get away from Rookie with the movement speed, looking for the rune prison to be able to keep him in place. A lot of damage thrown back on top of him. Rookie is able to do so much, and there it is, the lockdown. He's trying to dash away with the stride breaker. Jun will be able to take the lantern to safety, but now Rogue Warrior, it is their time to see if they can collapse. They've got the lockdown on a wink as Jojo takes a lot of damage for the team. Bates call to be able to keep him alive with a needlework damage on Shun. He takes his own lantern to be able to survive again, forcing him all the way back, continuing to chase down, continuing to whittle them down. Rogue Wars yet again having a fight that works out and another piercing arrow from Betty to take another one with them. This is not working out for IG at all. These picks are disastrous, especially onto tanky members like ZZ. Z and now, I mean, I just feel for Nani. I just watch him. He's got to be like, guys, can we please just take one group to fight? I am not have my teleport available. Can we please just wait? Wait until I'm there. And now, Rogue Warriors, they're the ones that are feeling confident to go for this 20-minute power. Yeah, I mean, look, it's going to be a couple seconds till Shun's back up. Even though Rook does have TP, they can attempt the fight. This is going to be tough, though. I'm not sure. Baron taking them low. This it's is not really looking low. good for Rogue looking Warriors. For the heal. Trying to see if they can have the snipe fight. Nice knockup coming in from Jojo. They secure it, but they lose the Alistar. Now with Forge in the middle of Lucas. Trying to see if they can kite him back. Huge showstopper to take two members with them. Then he trying to be able to gallop himself away, but the chains keep him reined in. Rookie, he's going to take a big piercing arrow to the face and taken out yet again by Betty. 
and this is actually rogue warriors now firmly in control of this game they punish mistake after mistake from invictus gaming they take the fight at the baron they take the baron and now they have control they can even look at this dragon that's coming up in two minutes but we're going to get the replay of this bottom side play ig just went way too deep they try to go for the dive they don't even get the kill and then here there's just everyone in rogue warriors shows up out of the woodwork and ignady again still in mid forge is just sitting there with them as well to make sure that nanny's actually not able to get anything off of this and ig punished once more and this damage in from betty he has also come online to these squishy members on the side of ig but look at looking at this play it's just wow i gotta give chocho some credit too with the, his yeah. ability to peel back for the team yeah, I think Chocho was the hero there because that could have been disastrous, especially if Rookie's getting like AoE damage off from that pit. You get that big Body Bear ultimate coming in on top of everyone as well. Like that burst damage alone could have ended things for Rogue Warriors there. But Chocho, he's working his way through everyone, consistently getting multi bat knock ups, knocking people like Rookie away. And it means that Rogue Warriors can get that Baron and then turn towards the fight after. And then what did we talk about before with Rogue Warriors? If they could survive, they could thrive. And sure enough, by uh, against all odds, they have survived and they are thriving. Looking at Betty, 6, 0, and 4. Looking at even Xiao Hao, how he has been able to hold on. Now he's got that Rift Maker completed to be able to be that threat that Gwen wants to be. Just needed one more item until nobody can stop her. Yeah, once he gets that Sonya's Hourglass, he's good to go. Like, that's pretty much uh, Gwen's kind of dream state, where she's able to have that survivability in fight. She can play off of the healing and her cooldowns. She's going to be in a really, really good spot now, though. IG trying to see if they can go back towards playing the map state out wider and having Shun help out Rookie. But it's on to Forge. It's on to Silas. Silas is deceptively difficult to be able to kill. They've got a couple members trying to be able to commit for this full dive. The Moonfall returned back. Oh, Both no. of them golden. And what did I say? You don't really want to try to see if you can kill a Silas. And now Xiao Hao on the flank. They got Shun. They've got the damage. Lucas trying to be able to get away from the fight. But he cannot escape. Double kill for Forge. And it's again IG trying to make these picks. Rookie will get away, but look at the bottom of your screen. I don't think You've he already is. lost the base. He's trying to run away. They're just trying to make sure they can stop this back. The snip snips from Xiao Hao while the base is being taken by Betty, by Chocho. A lot of damage comes back in onto Gwen. Going to dodge away with the hallowed ground. But the base is actually in tatters at the moment. Rogue Warriors, they're trying to be able to end this game. They've got the bot lane. They've got the minions. Nenny, he wants to be able to hold on for dear life as Rookie was finally able to take down Gwen. But the Nexus Church are to fall. One more gone. The fight continues inside of the base of IG. Rogue Warriors, all they need to do is finish off the next, but now that Rookie's been able to show up, they're taking down Zed and Zed, and they might be able to take down Forge with them with the damage coming in from Rookie. They follow it back up, try to see if they can take him. They do, in fact, get both members that were inside the base of IG. They hold on tight. The Get Dragon, though. You know, that's good, I suppose. Is I it? just feel sorry for IG fans. Like, how do you go from 2 0 in FPX in such a dominant fashion and then coming into this and like throwing away your 3,000 gold lead against Rogue Warriors? Like, IG are the most confusing team that we have in the LPL. Now, look, base in tatters. Everything has gone Rogue Warriors' favor. A 3,000 gold lead now for them. But that dragon going across towards IG at least gives IG still another window that they can play around. If you're able to get this mountain, so it gives them the opportunity to try and nullify some of the scaling opportunities that we were talking about for Rogue Warriors. But actually just going to get a replay here of uh, Rookie. Nice burst damage. That could have actually been the end. They could have. I actually love that from Xiao Hao. If, if he'd killed Rookie, this game was done. Like he just didn't have enough damage here from IG to to stop Ro uh, Rogue Warriors from being able to finish this off. You can see, like, Lucas has nothing left. Amy's not going to survive. Shun falls. It's Rookie that's able to keep this game alive. Pretty much. It's all on Rookie. All on surviving that fight. Whoa, I think double-digit health in that fight against Chow Hao underneath the turret. And with yeah. this, there is... I mean, they still got to deal with the fact they have nothing defending that nexus nothing stands around it all it will take from rogue warriors is having both forge and zdz backdooring to end the game i mean that is one of the things with silas you can steal away a realm warp and you can bring everybody in onto the gravy train 
And even here as well, I mean, you've got your teleports up for uh, for ZDZ. Plonk in bot lane, he escorts that wave in, but unfortunately Rogue Warriors haven't really copped on to that. They've got to keep him in mid, ZZZ in mid lane right now to push in that wave. The wave has already been pushed in by Rookie in that bottom side as well, so not really having multi-man pressure across the map. And with ZZZ mid, maybe you look for a flank here from me. Also, Forge, you stole the wrong ult, my friend. You need to steal rookies just because I want to see the back door. That's the real reason, as now they are attempting to fight. Oh, Chocho! He has burst down. It doesn't matter if you have Unbreakable Will. They've got Betty to go golden. Same with June. And the fight is going to be a 4v5 with damage on June in the back line. Trying to see if they can take him down. They're going to be able to get the kill for Forge in the back line. Wait, two. He's dragged back in, but it's been even. Rookie trying to be able to hold on to dear life once more. And Xiao Hao is able to scare him away, but Nenny is full of health. He is a big, big. Bear, and he's going to be able to get another one to go gold with Rookie again holding on just barely. Holy Rookie, how in the name of God are you alive at the end of that? I loved how he was able to keep himself at bay, wait for the needlework to finish, and then realizes, hang on, there's nothing here that can really threaten me. So he starts to play forward and can turn this around, and somehow IG managed to turn that fight around, and now they get the Baron. I know uh -oh. we're looking at these minions, but you'll finish the Baron, Imperative Recall, Forge. they'll be totally fine. Oh no, okay, Shun's here, and same with Wink. I was wondering more about Forge since he was about to respawn and could have gone for the TP backdoor. The thing about Silas is he has a lot more burst onto objectives such as a Nexus than people realize. Well, we're going to get this replay here. I actually thought this was Doom. Shame. I watched Shun here. He goes on towards Xiaohu. He misses the ultimate. And I was like, okay, that's a massive uh, game changer. But as we talked about, with ZDZ being in that mid lane, he's so late to this fight that IG are already working through the majority of the back line. Wink goes down, but Rookie is still up and available. Now watch, Xiaohu Bao. Second that needlework is used and the Haymaker's down, Rookie's all in. He's playing on just the minuscule amount of health. Great play from Lucas keeps him alive. And Rookie is playing these fights so incredibly well. Hey, Rookie, he is trying to make sure that this game is not going to end. He does not want a game three. Like you had said, they had a 3,000 gold bleed. And yet here they now stand, barely holding on to this game, waiting for this inhibitor to respawn to make sure they can still claw out a victory with a minute and a half until Dragon as well. Now, especially for people like Rookie, like Wink, they won't have their flashes available for this fight. So it makes it a hell of a lot harder. Stop watching Rookie's back pocket though means he's still got a little bit of survivability. We'll be relying on Lucas to keep him safe as he comes out of that stopwatch. But for people like Forge and um, like Xiaozi about, they are ones that are in much better spot as Pink. Lucas, Lucas taking a lot of damage, barely alive though. He will limp back to the team and it doesn't matter. There's still a long time left until that objective, the dragon spawns back up. Yeah, it would have been nice if they got the pick. It would have meant that Lucas was out of the equation. A lot of the vision and map control would have gone in the favor of Rogue Warriors, but unfortunately not able to make that happen. Nothing really invested though from Rogue Warriors. So they're still going to be perfectly fine to hang on for this next fight. Keep pressure on towards IG and make sure that IG are walking into this Dragon Blood. At least that's what they're attempting to do. They're keeping the flank potential for Xiao Hao, looking for Shun, looking for the 1v1 fight. But this could be a dangerous game you're playing here, Rogue Warriors. We've already seen that these fights, they might be on a knife's edge, but Rookie, as long as he is left alive, he is able to have the machine gun rise damage. Yeah, big minion wave in that top side as well is going to take a lot of damage off that top turret and I actually don't mind this from IG, right? You just give it up and right. you look to crack open the base as well. They got the Baron. Oh, I was really hoping that we'd see that Rogue Warriors would just go for the straight up base race, but they all recall the understanding that the Baron empowered uh, team on the side of IG was enough to beat them even if they have an exposed Nexus that they can deal with. It feels like IG have kind of flicked their brains back on though, right? Because now we're actually seeing, hey, look, we don't have to fight for Dragon. We can get the push uh, in mid. They're playing through these side lanes exceptionally well, but Rookie pushing that top wave in. So they get that top turret exceptionally low. Doesn't quite fall, but that's nearly two terrors that went in favor of IG for a mountain dragon over four rogue warriors. Now it does again kind of 
delay IG, I will say, in that they would love to be able to get their hands on a Mountain Soul, but I think they're not confident that they win these fights anymore, because honestly, I'm I'm kind of with them. When Xiaoxiao Bao has just finished off his Zanyas, didn't have a full off fight, but you see three items now starting to come through on some of these champions, it feels like Rogue Warriors, certainly in a straight-up brawl, would have the advantage if both teams execute well. And that's the thing, you gotta execute well, and we've already seen that these fights are hanging precariously. Rookie, <laughs> I gotta give this man, this his rise is definitely the stuff of legends on how he's been able to bring this game back, bring them back to that 3,000 gold lead that they had had before. Suddenly, Rogue Warriors were able to get pick after pick and fight after fight. Well, IG now looking to see if they can get vision control, potentially look for some of those picks, give pressure on towards this bottom side of the map. And I'd love to see them kind of split it out, right? Have Nani start to threaten that mid inhibitor and Rookie start to push with the rest of the team on this bottom side. But it looks like at the moment, they're kind of caught between the two places. They don't want to separate themselves and give the opportunity for Rogue Warriors to pick off IG. As right now, Rogue Warriors, they still have their backs against the wall and they understand that even if They've got the scalings to start working. They've already got the three item Gwen. You can see from the mini map how little control they have over the jungle. Pretty much just wards right outside what they consider the critical points. This tier two turret, and this is a difficult one to defend. Especially when you can have Nani flank at any point in time. No pressure in mid lane. Oh, actually, as I see Betty backing off there. He is. I was surprised. I thought they might try and like it is used Betty to wave clear here. You don't have the Baron buff on IG anymore, so could have cleared the wave, but Betty going back, finishing off his Edge of Night, means that he'll be a little bit safer from Shun going for these big engages or any sort of play that Nani can make. But now, Rogue Warriors moving back topside with 45 seconds until Baron. ZDZ will be able to get away. Got hooked in by Lucas. Oh man, Rogue Warriors, I did not expect you to be at this point where you're so close, you're inches away from victory. And right now, Chocho he is on a journey. They are trying to make sure that vision that they had no control of around this pit, that he's been able to have this solo YOLO mission to grab some back. The problem though is that it's real deep in IG side, right? And for IG, they don't need to go there. They just hold uh, jungle control for Rogue Warriors, river control as well, and you've no vision on the Baron. So, I mean, yeah, it was a great solo mission, but it didn't really get anything. Not at all. And look at the damage. That is negligible to Nenny. He just shirks all of it off. And even with the triple Jojo. knock up, nobody's followed it up just yet. They're waiting, trying to see if they're going to be able to have the flank. And Jojo is already dead before ZDZ is even able to be in a position to answer that. So, Realm Warp onto the Baron. IG just want to be able to take the objective, even though they've spotted out this set. They're looking to see if they can grab onto him. They pulled him back in. He flashed away. He's still alive. Play in with a lot of damage on top of him. Big Knight ticking two. They're going to be able to get the root coming in, but another depth sentence coming in from Lucas to make sure he cannot escape. Though they do throw one right back into the face of IG. It's only the support that they've lost. And now, Forge, Betty, they are on a mission. Can they get the back door? I, there's no minions, but it doesn't matter, right? There's no turrets. It's just no. the inhibitor left standing. IG, how funny can Wait a minute. This? No. Now you, there's even TP. Many. Nanny, you knew that they were on the top, bottom side of the map. They're looking no, to just backdoor the game. There's nothing there. They're not going to be able to get back in time. Rogue Warriors, they fight valiantly, and they strike in game two to bring us to game three. Oh, God. I cheat. No. <laughs> you said fall back. You'd managed to, like, right the wrongs of the past, and then you come in. And Nani TPs it. It was the one play, the single play that Rogue Warriors could have done to close out this game. And you didn't even need to commit all those members. Two members would have been fine. Have two members to deal with anyone who tries to go for the backdoor base. Shao so, or Shao Hao even putting pressure on towards that barn here to stop the recalls. And God, that's heartbreak. That is. Oh, God.
You know, I was looking for the back door that entire time from Rogue Warriors. So many times I thought they could have just stolen away the realm warp and backdoored themselves. I didn't expect that they could walk right up into the back door and have nobody home. Pretty much any, he was even home and he just left immediately. Yeah. Didn't even try to stick around to make sure he could have easily stopped them. So the team could have gotten the Baron, recalled back, fought them. But I guess they just didn't yeah. expect Forget that Rogue Warriors like, would go for it. He was home. He, he didn't even lock the front door. He left the front door <laughs> open. He laid his valuables out on the ground. and was like, here you go. You know, here's my iPad, my laptop, my PC. Here's my bank details in case you needed it. And my spare ca card like number. It was just like, why? I, I don't know. Look, IG, they're a special breed. And I don't know. They had this game so many times. Yep. They had the early lead. They were playing through side lanes. They tried to overextend these picks, give Rogue Warriors the opportunity to get back into it. Then they claw their way back into an advantage once again, and they just throw it away. That is heartbreaking for any IG fan. Especially for Rookie. I mean, Rookie, you could tell he was playing his <laughs> oh, damn God. heart out throughout that game. Yeah. How many times he lived on the sliver of HP, literally clawing that game back over and over again. If anybody's game it was to win, it was Rookie's. Yeah. And it felt like, <laughs> I mean, it really was like Rookie MVP for that. He <laughs> tried so hard in those team fights. Wink was getting caught. In. And to be honest, like, it's not really much that Wink can do, right? ZDZ yeah. flashing in on top of you, having these TP flanks. He was like the main port of call for trying to jump onto me. You even see the damage. Like, Rookie was churning out so much over and over. And that go grab speaks volumes to what this game was. Pretty much, pretty much. And you, I mean, even look at the gold graph itself in general and just see how that, that was a deficit. Rogue Warriors won that game with a gold deficit to IG, even after they were able to drag back that mid game, get themselves in a lead, and then Rookie being Rookie on rise and being nearly unstoppable. All it took was his team to commit to Baron and leave the front door wide open. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm like, IG, some, we were praising how decisive they were in their victories. And unfortunately, <laughs> the decisiveness of that TP kind Caster of cost them there as well. That was, but look, I think again, like Rogue Warriors, nice call from them. Actually managing to go, hey, look, if they actually make this mistake, this is the way that we either, one, stop them taking the Baron because they have to go for full resets or we can end the game. It was the one way that they were going to be able to bring that back and they actually managed to do it. Now, I think for Rogue Warriors, looking for the rest of the, the game, like this third game in the series, Stop trying to be so complicated. Like, we saw Chocho go for that flash engage. We had ZDZ trying to TP in. You don't need to do that. If you're in that situation where you've got this late game scaling, just play front to back, take it easy, and hope that when we get in towards game three, that IG maybe don't make the same mistakes. Or if you're a Rogue Warriors fan, they do. Well, we'll see what's going to happen because we do have a game three between Rogue Warriors and Invictus Gaming. Don't go anywhere.